We all know that women have been severely impacted by COVID-19 across nearly all dimensions of their lives, from their health to their safety and security, to their family lives and economic well-being. At the same time, women are also on the very front lines of response efforts. As a community of women leaders, how can we build back better? What can we learn from our previous experiences and what is the role for women in this time of recovery? We will now hear a special address by United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed on how women leaders are driving the recovery from COVID-19. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, it is my honor to join you at the Reykjavik Global Forum today. I'm inspired to see so many women leaders collaborating on global solutions. This pandemic has asked each of us to rise to meet the health, humanitarian and development crisis, as women leaders around the world have answered the call from the front lines saving lives and livelihoods. In recent decades, we have made some important strides towards gender equality, including in lessening discriminatory laws, furthering gender parity and education, and increasing women's participation in the labor force. However, even these gains are at risk by the devastation brought about by the COVID-19 crisis. As a result, women have been among those most impacted by the economic consequences and unemployment. Women's unpaid workloads have risen, gender bias violence has increased, and access to sexual and reproductive health have become compromised. These imbalances have devastating consequences. An estimated 11 million girls will likely be forced to quit their schooling before the end of this pandemic. We know that the role of women in decision-making positions is essential to a successful global recovery. And that is because when women are equally represented, the outcomes are better for everyone. In governments around the world, women leaders have been effective in flattening the curve and positioning their nations for economic recovery. And yet the numbers of women in management and leadership positions continues to be far too low. It is for this reason that the Women Rise for All initiative was launched earlier this year as a global advocacy effort. Women Rise for All engages women leaders who can advance our roadmap for social and economic recovery from COVID-19. We as a global network of women leaders are rising in solidarity to lead a recovery, not a return to an old normal, but to more equal, inclusive, climate just and resilient communities of the future. In that spirit, it is my pleasure to introduce a video of some of the inspirational women leaders participating in the Women Rise for All. Thank you. Like no other time in recent history, women are on the front lines of COVID-19 and bearing the brunt of this human crisis. They are the first responders in hospitals and clinics, leading in science and research, and on the front lines of politics and communities. I raise for all because COVID-19 has exposed in a glaring way the inequalities of our society. For all people who seek truth that is founded in metrics, compassion, and the rule of law. No one alive today has ever faced a global health crisis on the scale of COVID-19. Now is the time to support our international system to act. We are in the middle of a major global crisis. The coronavirus knows no borders. The togetherness that is necessary to beat this pandemic has become part and parcel of our ethos. I'm rising in solidarity with other global leaders because I can see the long-term consequences of this human crisis. We all face the same enemy, and we stand to gain by bringing the full force of humanity together to fight it. The novel coronavirus reminds us all just how interconnected our world is. In our global village, solidarity. Is that each of us have talents, each of us have specific conditions that make us different. But it is in our diversity acting together that we can win these battles. We must address the gender impacts on the COVID-19 pandemic in our response and recovery packages. These solutions can be found right here within our communities. They know better how badly their life has been impacted. 
Let's not waste this moment in time to merely react to combat COVID-19. Working together to prioritize the needs of the poorest and the most vulnerable people around the world is essential to ending this pandemic once and for all. Global institutions and governments must work together because we know that if the virus remains active somewhere, we cannot be safe anywhere. Ensure that our recovery is inclusive and sustainable. The sustainable development goals must be our compass. We can do it working together, but we need to respect each other, to see each other, to hear each other, and to work together. Learn from this human crisis to recover better by building back better together. My call is simple. It's our turn.